Hello everyone, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink, back with another slimline card because I'm obsessed. <laughs> also using the Simon Says Stamp Sketch Tulip Bouquet stamp set, which I've done multiple videos on. This is another one that is quite a favorite of mine. So I will, and I'll have links in the upper right corner to the previous videos and I'll have links um, at the end of the video as well. So anywho, I cut down some Ranger watercolor paper and I have the smooth side facing up and I want to get a bunch of these uh, tulip bouquet stamp. Now this is a large stamp as you can see. And with a slimline card, you gotta get a little creative with images that aren't meant for that sort of card size, if that makes sense. So I am just going to keep stamping it and I'm only stamping basically the upper portion. I'm not worried about the base of it because I'm not gonna need it. So I'm stamping with VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink. And I just keep moving the watercolor paper through my Misty here so I can stamp it multiple times. I was able to fit four on each piece. I'm not worried about like spacing or anything like that. I just want them to be far enough apart because I will die cut them with the coordinating wafer die when I'm done. And I end up doing all of this twice. So altogether, I end up with eight of these stamped because I want to do a whole cluster for my finished card. So I did the exact same thing, just kind of lined up the second piece and both of these pieces are roughly the size of a slimline card, um, like three and a half by eight and a half inches. It didn't need to be exact because again, I'm gonna die cut this, but I also wanted it to give me a rough idea of how much of the image I'm gonna be using and that way I'm also not wasting time coloring stuff that I'm going to be cutting off, like the all the bases of these tulips. So I just kept going along. It doesn't matter if the card stock's hanging out the misty, everything still stamps great. So once everything is stamped, I am gonna do some super easy watercoloring using my Distress Oxide sprays. Funny enough, two of the other videos I've done using this set, I use the Distress Oxide sprays for watercolor. It's like, I don't know, for me, it's like they go together. You know, it's like peas and carrots. Um, this large sketch tulip bouquet and Distress Oxide sprays. I don't know why I just gravitate towards the two, but you can use anything. You can use Distress Oxide inks, you can use Distress inks, um, any water reactive dye ink, watercolors, etc., etc., etc. The fun thing with the Distress Oxide sprays is they are more, obviously they're liquid. So I find I get a faster kind of, you know, reaction as the colors sort of separate. And also it just gives me an excuse to use them because of course I have every single Distress Oxide spray. So this just gives me, you know, more use. So all I did was shake the bottle side to side. You don't want to shake them up and down because the um, color can start coming out the nozzle and whatnot. So you shake them side to side because they do separate because Distress Oxide, there's pigment, ink, etc. So you shake them side to side to mix it all up. And then I just put some into my uh, waffle flower water media mat here, just into the wells. And I'm using Worn Lipstick and what was the other one? Wild Honey. Yeah, Worn Lipstick, Wild Honey, and then Peeled Paint for the greenery. And then I'm just painting with my water brush and that's it. I am not gonna do any layering, anything fancy. I do mix like the Wild Honey and the Worn Lipstick together on some of the tulips, you know, the, just to give them some variation. But even then, I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just painting the color on and leaving it at that. Just simple. So with other ones I've done, I'll heat emboss the images, I'll do layers or add more water. You can kind of do whatever you want. You experiment with it and see what, what works. So I went through and I just did all of the blooms first, just cause it's easier. And then after I'd worked my way across and did all of the like flower heads, I would go back and do all the greenery. And especially the greens I noticed with the oxides. I think it's just the pigments that make up their green colors. Those ones could tend to be the most fun in a sense when it comes to like painting with them like this, because you get some interesting little variations depending on which colors you're using. So painted all this on. And then of course <laughs> I did a ton of splatter because I told you guys in whatever video it was a while ago, once the splatter train is back, I can't not splatter literally everything. So that's that's where I'm at still. So I'm just using a paintbrush and just picking up those oxide sprays, splattering them. Just the two colors, the worn lipstick and the wild honey. I'm not gonna splatter the peeled paint on anything. 
And then after I got those splattered, I'm gonna do my Perfect Pearl powder mixed with water. My little mini mister here that has, I just put Perfect Pearl powder, there's no measurement. I just put some in, add some distilled water. It's good to go. It's getting almost empty, so I'm gonna have to add some more. But that wasn't enough, so I actually poured some out onto the, another one of the wells and picked it up with a paintbrush. You do have more control with a paintbrush and splatter than using like the hoses and the nozzles and everything else like I normally do. It just depends on what you're going for. So heavily splattered everything. And then I also splattered with just water. That's what I'm doing here. It's adding a bit of water. It adds a little bit. You don't get as much of a reaction with these inks because I've already added a bunch of water to do the water coloring. So you won't get that really fun like splatter effect with just water like you do when you blend oxide inks, etc. which I will show when I do the background. So everything was dry. I die cut it with a coordinating wafer die. So I've got this pile of tulips, which is just pretty and it's all shimmery and fabulous. And then I have another piece of the Ranger watercolor paper, smooth side facing up. This one I cut to just slightly smaller than what my slimline card will be. So it's about a little over, it's like three and three eighths by eight and three eighths, something like that. Just, just slightly smaller than what the card will be. And I am blending Faded Jeans Distress Oxide Ink. Again, using my water media mat because it just kind of grips the paper. And I've super sped this up in editing, but I took my time to kind of get a nice smooth little blend. And then some of the leftover ink that was on the media mat, I just kind of mix it with a little bit of water. This adds a very subtle splatter, which is still fun. And then I smushed more of the ink pad to get a more intense version of the color to add more splatter. And then I'm not going to stop there. <laughs> I'm going to add some perfect pearl splatter to you because once the shimmer is but that part of it too, can't stop with the splatter, but also I just, I'm kind of obsessed with this as splatter because it's so pretty. So here I'm literally like opening the bottle and using the nozzle and just like shaking it to get the big splotches and then also flicking it with my finger. And then, like I said, you can also use a paintbrush that gives you a little more control and a little bit finer of a splatter. It just depends on the look you're going for, but I wanted more, 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 more. So heavily splattered that, picked up a little bit of excess. You don't need to with this, but I just did that with a paper towel just because it also helps it dry faster. And then let everything dry. And then to adhere it all, I'm just using craft tacky glue. I kind of arranged um, the tulips how I wanted them to show up on this background. And then once I was happy with that, I just started gluing them all down with the craft tacky glue and kind of moving things around because I wanted obviously some to layer on top of the others and whatnot. So some I cut um, or I adhered exactly how they're die cut, you know, right at the base there. And then the other ones, I'm going to let them hang off and I'll trim them off once I've got everything adhered. Um, I was using my acrylic blocks piled up on top of them just to kind of hold everything down as it dried. So I went through and adhered all of these tulips. I had saved a couple. I'm gonna use them on the inside. That's also why I did so many. So get everything adhered into place. And I'm really loving how the light this time was actually picking up the Perfect Pearl splatter because sometimes it is hard to show on camera. So got everything adhered. And then I just flip this over and use my scissors to trim off all the pieces that are just kind of hanging off the edges here so that this will fit nicely on the actual card base. So got all that trimmed off. And then for my sentiment, I actually pulled out the Luck and Hugs set that Simon released not too long ago. I've used this a few times just for the sentiments. So I chose one of the smaller sentiments from the set and I cut down just a strip of black cardstock. And then I am going to line up the sentiment using my Misty again. I used my anti-static powder tool on the black cardstock, brushed off the excess. And then I'm gonna stamp this little sentiment with just clear embossing ink. And I just kind of rub my finger back and forth on the lid of the Misty. I try not to press too much when I'm doing little sentiments like this. Because more often than not, if you press and put too much pressure, you're just kind of smushing the fine detail into the cardstock. And then you end up with a blob instead of the detail. So got that stamped, coated it with detail white embossing powder, melted that with my heat tool. And then I can adhere this to the front of my card. So I'm using just some thin 3D foam squares. I got these black ones. Honestly, it wouldn't matter. You could just use regular, like the white ones. It doesn't really matter. But one of the little fun tricks, rather than adhere every individual square to the back of this piece, because it's long, 
I just peeled off the backing off a row, pressed the strip onto that, peeled it off. And then with this, I had to do it a second time because this is so long, but this made it a lot faster. <laughs> so just peeled off the backing and left the little foam squares on the release sheet. Once I got the row um, of the little pieces removed, I just press that sentiment strip right onto there and then peel it right up. And then all I got to do now is just line this up and press it onto my card. So got that lined up, press that onto my card. I chose the thin foam squares to, because I'm adhering over so much um, unevenness from adhering all those die cut flowers. So got that adhered. And then for my card base, uh, heavyweight white cardstock. I'm going to trim this down to seven inches. So it's a full sheet of cardstock. So it'll be seven inches by eight and a half inches. Once that's trimmed, I can score this at three and a half inches with my Teflon bone folder. So this will be a three and a half inch by eight and a half inch slimline card. And like I've mentioned in other videos, there is no standard size for slimline. Um, it's whatever works for you, whatever sort of envelope you want. I've done ones that are like four by nine, that sort of thing. I am like, I think I'm pretty much sticking with this size though, because I now have that slim, slim line envelope wafer die set that I purchased not too long ago. And that's also why I'm making all these cards because now I have cute envelopes to go with it. And I'll have a link to that die set and I'll show the envelope I made for this card as well. So for me, um, three and a half by eight and a half inches is like become my go-to slimline card size, but you will see other ones um, that just vary a little bit because it's just one of those sizes. It's just not a set in stone, like A2, A4, A7, etc. So for the inside of the card, I stamped the big hugs from that Luck and Hug set with that same faded jeans distress oxide ink. And then I have these two remaining little tulip clusters. So I'm going to adhere these to the inside of the card with the craft hacky glue. And same thing, press those into place and then just flip the card over and trim off the excess with my scissors. And then once that's trimmed off, I can adhere the card front to my card base with uh, more craft tacky glue. So like I'd said, I'd cut it slightly smaller than the card base. So it's just framed just that little bit. So got that adhered into place. And then of course, I'm gonna add a little bit more bling. <laughs> <laughs> because you can never have enough ever you can't have enough bling so I pulled out the strawberry shortcake like confetti and sequin mix from Simon the colors were just kind of perfect with all of this so um, I picked out a lot of the confetti pieces because they were just the right colors for this and liberally sprinkled these throughout the entire card so once I was kind of happy with it I started adhering these into place with just dabs of the craft tacky glue using my little embellishment wand. And I'm still going to add more because again, you can never have enough. So when those are all adhered, the card will be done for the envelope. I didn't include how I made the envelope because I've already done a video showing how to assemble this envelope. It was the Trinity stamps. Let the good times roll video I did not too long ago. But that's the wafer dice that I use, which I will link to. And I just pulled out some Doodlebug pattern paper. I linked to the pack I used because sometimes it's not available anymore. But this one, it's just one of the pink pattern papers from um, one of the Doodlebug packs. But I die cut it with the envelope pieces and adhered it all together. So I have this cute little pink envelope for my card. And that finishes everything off. So like I said, I will have links below the video. I'll have a supply list. I'll have a link to my blog post. There'll be picture links in the blog post. All of that will be in the description box below the video. So you guys can check it out if you are interested. Thank you all so much for watching and subscribing and thumbs upping, commenting, all of it. I really appreciate it. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.